ทัสสะปะโกอะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนัมโมทัสสะปะโกอะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนัมโมทัสสะปะโกอะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะซีรีส์เอธรรมทอกนัมบัตฟอร์ตี้ทรีเราประทับใจในมิติและสติปัญญาทั้งหลายหรือเราเห็นว่าเราเข้าไปและ Investigating the nature of self, or the nature of mind and matter. So while we are exploring that, we come across various characteristics, qualities with regard to mind and matter, and we have discussed quite a bit. The first stage, we uncover or unfold is this phenomenon of mind and phenomenon of matter are totally two different phenomena. They are entirely separate, which means it is the insight knowledge into the. Discriminative awareness of mind and matter—that's the first. And then, second stage, we understand this mind and matter. Even though they are separate, they work hand in glove through the causal relation. The relationship between the two is through cause and effect. Cause and effect. That is the. Second part we understood. In general, we put these two as the first two insight, okay, of mind and matter in a series that we put it into thirteen. These two, the first two insights of mind and matter, in a vipassana jnana. In other words. The understanding about or wisdom of vipassana, but in a stricter sense, these first two, okay, they are not vipassana jnana. They are simply the qualities and characteristics of mind and matter, but we put it. Under vipassana jnana, why it is not under vipassana jnana? And if you understand vipassana clearly and precisely, vipassana is v, okay, various, various characteristics. In fact, only three, but we call it v, various. These three are anicca, dukkha, and nata, impermanence, suffering, on unsatisfactoriness, or non-self. These three are the characteristics of vipassana. The mind and matter. If you are investigating vipassana. Okay, Observing, investigating, exploring—okay, you can put anything. You are observing the impermanence of mind and matter, the suffering or unsatisfactory nature of mind and matter, and the non-self nature of mind and matter. That is vipassana. So, in the first two. There's nothing we talk about these three characteristics, three general characteristics of mind and matter. 
So in a stricter sense, it is not vipassana in sight. But we put it under vipassana. Because to get into that, okay, three characteristics, first and foremost, you have to have the fundamental understanding, the background of mind and matter, which is there are two phenomena and also they walk <coughs> hand in gloves through the tool of cause and effect. As such, one should understand. So that is, we call it vipassana number one, number two, or level one, level two, insight one, insight two. Okay. And then number three, still we are uncovering the nature of mind and matter. What it is is the first direct experience that this mind and matter is impermanent suffering and non-self, the first level of understanding or the first experience. At that time it is, it seems like it, but at least you get a taste of it, a taste of it and with the aid of some reflectiveness okay, after the effect, after the meditation. And number four is this mind and matter they arises and they pass away, arising and passing away. What is this? Thus arising and passing away is indicating or indicator of anicca, impermanence. But now it's with clarity compared to number three. This number four is a lot clearer with sharpness and clarity and precision. So that is number four. You really understand deeper. Okay, all these minds and all these matter, they arise and you can see when it starts. And then they disappear. You can see when they stopped or dissolve. And number four, that is number four. And then when we got to number five, we see this mind and matter and the main difference between the four and five is your concentration powers become even stronger and deeper. That's the difference. So when it becomes stronger and deeper at number five, you see the dissolution or passing away so quick and so fast. You don't even have a a chance or a time to see the beginning anymore. They simply passed away, passed away, passed away. In other words, number five is you have even a deeper experience of the nature of impermanence. And along with it, what happened is it is dissolving so fast, okay, it seems like everything is simply disappear. You don't even know when it starts. Disappear, disappear, disappear. So that itself, experiencing that constant disappearance of all mind and matter is becoming a, a torture to you. And that is the way one experiences the suffering. Actually you felt it, that tightening effect. Before, number four was so good, so great, with such an ease. And here is, that ease is gone. And everything is like a shadow. Gone, gone, gone. And that feeling is the suffering itself. So you begin to experience the dukkha suffering in a deeper level. And then suddenly, this disappearance so much, you are getting really okay, bothered by it. But at the same time, you find it, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't control it. And that ability not to control, okay, you cannot control this mind and matter. That is the manifestation of anatta, okay, non-self. 
You simply just got control. And the Atta, Atta has a sense of control. Okay? The higher you practice, the deeper you get, the more you can control. So in a Samatha meditation, you have that control factor higher and higher and higher. And the Atta becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And in here, you just can't control this because it is simply dissolving in front of you. So in a way, that is the manifestation of anatta in an experiential sense. So these three, five, one, two, three, four, five, you are uncovering all mind and matter is unfolding its true nature to you. And you practice, you experience, you practice, you experience, you practice, you experience, up to this number five. And then after number five, you still observing the best that you can. And then you experience what we call, let's call it insight number six, and seven, and eight, and so on. Okay? In the insight, it is said as insight six, seven, eight, you are uncovering more and more and more. That is the way it is. Now what I'm going to say is, not in the book, not said by anybody, not in the scripture. Okay? I may be wrong, but this is the way I experience. This insight number six, seven, and eight is you are not unfolding okay, the nature of mind and matter. And you have unfolded the nature of mind and matter from one to five, and when it comes to five, the impact is so strong, it affects your psyche. Okay, the impact is so strong, it affects your psyche. It affects the nature of your mind. It changes the nature of your mind. Okay. So the way I put it is one to five are the causes and six, seven, eight are the effects. This is the way I look at it. Or I will coin a word. It is the emotional impact due to the true understanding experientially of the true nature of mind and matter. When you experience that constant rapid dissolution, you begin to experience these six, seven, and eight. Actually, these are emotional impact on you. Okay. Emotional impact on the mindful mind or observing mind. In other words, start changing it. So these are, traditionally, these are insights, but I like to explain it to the yogis. These are the emotional impacts caused by the understanding of mind and matter on the first five stages. So what happened? Okay, so let's see. Everything you observe is disappear, disappear, disappear. Nothing you can hold on. You felt like you can't even observe it because so fast. And there's nothing to observe. You observe it, whatever you're observing is gone. You observe it, whatever you observe is gone. Everything disappear, disappear, and there's nothing you can pinpoint. Nothing you can pin and then hold and examine. Nothing, nothing, nothing. We said it last week. Nothingness come to the meaning of nothingness. And also the meaning of emptiness. And everything simply disappear into the void. The meaning of the void. These words are quite often used in the other Buddhist traditions. But this is how I understand these words. 
from the experience of the constant rapid solution of mind and matter. There's nothing. And when there's nothing, what happens is okay, you have to know the normal states of mind of all human. What is the normal state of mind in all human is? I exist. Okay? Along with the I, there's an ego, there's an id. Along with I, ego, and it, we are always in a sense of trying to control our environment the best that we can. Some we manage it, some we couldn't. <clears throat> but still, we never give up. Okay, that's what makes us uh, in the modern world is people, the heroes. So that's a sense of control, sense of ego, sense of I. And I exist. And with that, we live. Okay, with that, we live. And suddenly, when you got to this number five inside stage, everything seems to disappear. Okay? You observe the matter, whatever it is, rising or falling or lifting or whatsoever hot or cold, simply dissolve. Dissolve, dissolve, dissolve. And then there's the mind that knows. The mind that knows. As soon as you are observing, the mind that knows is also gone and gone and gone and gone. Okay. There's an object. The material object's gone. The mind that knows gone. They are gone mean you don't even know, you can't even find a trees when it disappear, simply disappear. And for some yogi, even the mindful mind, it's simply disappearing. That's why you become dizzy and giddy at that moment, in those stages. Everything is, seems to be running away out of your hand, running away from your control. And before, this mind and matter, what do we say? This mind and matter is me. I am this mind and matter. Okay. This is how we, throughout our life, not even this life, throughout infinity of previous life, that's how we identified and believe and act and lived. And that concept, that belief simply got shaken in front of you when you see the dissolution. That's what happened. And suddenly, we still hold on to this I. We still hold on to this self because infinity of life's belief, it's hard to shake it out. And here there's a big struggle happen. One side is, you are holding on to I, and another side is there is the this I, which is mind and matter, nama and rupa, is disappearing, disappearing, disappearing. So suddenly you become scared. What you always believe I and self is simply disappearing without any control, and you become really scared and you become very fearful of it. Fearful that this I or self also will dissolve and gone. It's a struggle between the previous belief and the recent experience. Because of that, that fear came in. The fear that you will lose this I, you will lose this self, you will have no control over it. And you got shaken and you got very, very fearful. Fearful that all the beliefs that you have throughout eternity in the past is shaken and dissolved. Become very, very fearful, scared. Okay. In other words, if you put it in a different context, you began to see the, the
the danger of this nama and rupa, the danger of being with this nama and rupa. That great fear, because the grievia come out of not nowhere, not out of a blind belief. This great fear come out of the direct experience that everything is simply dissolving into this sinkhole right under your nose. And that's shaking up and you have the fear, oh, this nama and rupa is scary. This nama and rupa is fearful. That kind of feeling, mental feeling arises in you. But at the same time, it is not the fear with, without sense or without rhyme or without reason. You know exactly cause and effect and cause and effect and what is the rhyme, what is the reason. But even with that, you got fearful. And that stage of that fearfulness is called insight into the fear of mind and matter. That mind and matter is becoming a very fearful thing. But not out of blindness, but with every facts and where they experience. And if you want to know the Pali, what it's called, Baya Jnana. Baya. Jnana is insight. Baya is, you can call it, danger or fear. The danger of the nama and rupa, mind and matter. Fear towards the mind and matter. This is really scary. So, in other words, it is not that you uncover more of the qualities and characteristics of mind and matter. You uncover it and you get an emotional impact from your discovery. So that's why I said it is an emotional impact. You got fearful. And then, of course, you are supposed to be, while you are fearful, you are supposed to be observing fear, 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 fear. But uh, at that moment, it is difficult. You cannot, like, you cannot even observe that fear because it is go right down to the phone. Regardless, if the fear is dominant, you must observe the fear. Okay. And then, if the nama and rupa, you turn around and you don't want to see that fear, you don't want to face that fear, and you turn around and observe the nama and rupa, and still nama and rupa is just disappearing, disappearing, disappearing. So you are in between this, rapid disappearance of nama and rupa, the solution of nama and rupa, and that the fear that arises of understanding of the disappearance, you are in that struggle. That stage is called insight number six, the ya yana. It is the insight into the fear of the nama and rupa. Fear into the nama and rupa. In other words, this is totally garbage. It is scary to associate with that kind of understanding. And then you are still, of course, observing the disappearance of nama and rupa or the fear itself, and you're going, and you observe, and you observe, and suddenly you come to another level. Another level is this nama and rupa is disappearing. It is scary. It is scary to associate with. In other words, it is scary to associate with bully. Okay? It is scary to associate with mobster. Just like that. It is very scary to associate with this nama and rupa. And then what you have is you become disgusted with it. Okay. You become disgusted with the nama and rupa. 
because this is scary and you don't want to associate with the scary nature so in other words you still have to associate with a bully at school but inside you you are really repulsive about that bully you are disgusted at that bully in other words you begin to feel dislike or disgust towards the Nama and Rupa. And that is another level. Another level is in Pali is called Adinawa Jnana. Okay. Into the disgust, into the nature of Nama and Rupa. First of all, you got scared, you got afraid, you got fearful of it. And then even though you got fearful, you still are with it and you become disgusted of this whole phenomenon or this mind and matter. That is a, a different mental state. The first mental state is the scare and fearful of this mind and matter. And secondly is, but you still have to associate with it, so you begin to have disgust towards that phenomenon of mind and matter and that is insight number seven that's again that is another emotional impact it has on you because you have uncovered the true nature of mind and matter what are they anicca dukkha anatta impermanent suffering and non-self to the highest degree you have uncovered their nature, their characteristic, common characteristic or general characteristic, whatever you like to call it. What are they? Nicha, Dukkha, Anatta. To the highest degree you experience it, and first of all you become scared and fearful of this, Nama and Rupa. In other words, you are fair, fearful about that yourself what you have believed in self and I and it will dissolve along with all these things. Complex feeling. And then you still have to keep on living with it. You observe the best that you can and you begin to have that repulsive feeling, disgusted feeling towards this mind and matter. That is insight number seven. And then at the same time, you can't do anything. You can't control it. You can't make it dissolve. And while you're observing, sometime, whenever you direct it to the Nama and Rupa, it dissolution, dissolution, dissolution. And then suddenly the state of fear arises. And then suddenly the state of disgust arises. It is not that you are in a state of fear one time. And when you got to the state of disgust, the fear is gone. Not like that. They are overlapping. Fear, disgust, fear, disgust. But before, only the fear is pronounced and dominant. Now, fear and disgust, both that feeling. Okay? I keep on calling that emotional feeling or emotional impact is strong. But one thing, keep in mind, at the same time, you know exactly what is happening constant dissolution of mind and matter. You are not in a deluded state. You are not in a confused state. You have a full clarity what is happening. And from that, what is happening with full clarity, these emotional feelings are evolving, coming up. And then you just try your best, cope with it, and observe it. And at one point, what happened was another feeling arises. Okay. Another feeling arises. And this feeling is, you are there, you experience these constant solution, you got fear and disgust going round and round. At the same time, you can't control it. You observe it, you can't control it. But if you think it intellectually 
that you can't control it, you can't control it, you can't control it is the manifestation or the you are experiencing anatta. Keep that in mind. But at that moment, you don't see, you don't feel, you don't understand that way. It is just the whole waves and waves of emotion. But that not able to do anything about it is it is the direct experience of nata, non-self. You are experiencing non-self. These are compounded, compounded, compounded. Repetition, repetition, repetition. With that repetition, it will make an imprint on your psyche. So that is adi noa nyana. And you have to, you can't do anything, you live with it. You observe the best that you can. The only thing is, you don't give up that observing. But you struggle, you manage, you cope the best that you can. But these emotional feelings are sinking into your bones, that kind of thing. And then what happened was, the fear arises, disgust arises, you can't do anything, and seem like there's nothing I can do and sort of a resigned feeling, resigned feeling come in. In other words, you really feel miserable because you can't do anything. There's a consensus solution in one point, sometimes hit by that fear or scariness, sometimes disgust and repulsiveness hits you, and then that is keep on bombarding. You can't do anything and you sort of resign, and you begin to feel miserable, miserable feeling. That miserable feeling itself is considered as an insight, another emotional feeling. Miserable feeling is an emotion, a miserable feeling, but it is called insight. Six, seven, this miserable is number eight, insight number eight. Nibeda jnana, nibeda jnana. Insight into the misery of being with nama and rupa. Insight into the misery of being with this mind and matter. Insight into the misery of this self. In other words, you just feel miserable about yourself. Okay. These are all emotional impacts. They are not the characteristics of Nama and Rupa. But these deepest understanding of Nama and Rupa created these feelings. You become miserable. So if you look at it, you know, fearful, disgust, miserable, you lose interest. You lose interest into this mind and matter, physical phenomenon and mental phenomenon. You lose interest in self. You lose interest in yourself. You lose interest in everything. You become totally dispassionate before there's a passion about being me, about being I. There's a passion about being how to control and how to manage a situation. But this, through nature of mind and matter, teach you in the deepest level is there is nothing you can manage, there is nothing you can control. Everything is simply happening in its own nature, the true nature. And you are right with them. So, you lose passion, you don't want to do anything, you lose interest, you even lose interest in observing, observation or being mindful. So, in a way, you can say that you are in a state of depression. Okay. In a state of depression. What does depression, in general sense, mean? Depression is something you don't want to do anything. You lost interest in everything. 
You want to crawl in your bed and then didn't want to come out. Put it into a fetus position, but at the same time your mind is not clear. Nothing, everything lost. That is the mode of depression, state depression. And in the deeper level, these people who are depressed, they lost interest in so much, eventually they suicide, they kill themselves. This life is not worth it. That is depression to the moderate level, to the highest level. You kill yourself. That's depression because you lose interest in everything. But I call it, it's like in depression, but there's a difference, entire difference, entirely different from the, this normal psychological state of depression and this, let's, for lack of a better word, depression in this meditation. In this normal depression stage, you don't know what it is. You lose interest, but you don't really know the rhyme or the reason or what. Or Everything is unclear. Everything in a state of confusion. Everything is diluted. Everything is covered you with a big cloud, big mist. That's it. You have no understanding, no clarity. That's why you go to psychiatrists and psychologists and they try to pull you apart and show you why, what, how, when, where, what is causing this. Because you have to help somebody to show you why is this happening. That is the normal state. You do not know what is really happening. But in this meditation, for lack of a better word, I pull equivalence to depression, but it is entirely different. You lose interest in everything. You even lose interest in meditation. You lose interest in observation. But at the same time, your mind has the clarity about whatever is happening with precision. Your mind knows exactly the constant solution of mind and matter. Your mind knows that, that fear striking you. Your mind know there's a disgust striking you. Your mind know you are miserable. That mind, one thing is the mind has the clarity about whatever is happening. That's a different. The other depression in the normal life is they have no clue. But in here is it has the perfect clarity of knowing what is happening. That is the difference. So we cannot, in a precise word, use depression, but I try to compare. You lose interest in everything, so to speak. What is everything? Mind and matter. What is mind and matter? Self. You lose interest in self. You lose interest in mind and matter, and you don't feel like doing anything. Just that state of the whirlwind of fear and disgust and misery and scariness and repulsiveness and constant dissolution is going round and round and round and round. And at the same time, you can't pin on anything. That is the insight level states of number six, seven, and eight. That's what's happening in you. And then you still okay, struggle and observe and observe the best that you can. Because that's where the being with the teacher is important. Because in our system, in our method, when you are doing this long time retreat, three months, six months retreat, there is a teacher there all the time. At the beginning, you will have an interview every day and when it become a little bit better, the teacher say, okay, you come once every other day. And then when it keep on progressing, we'll say, you come once in three days. But when those kind of deeper states, okay, negative emotional states come in, the teacher will pull you back in. Okay, you come again. Ma, come on, let, come see me every day. Let's talk about what's happening. What it is is, the teachers know that stage and the teacher will give you guidance and encouragement, guidance and encouragement. 
And this guidance and encouragement can pull you out of that quite well if you follow it. If not, some yogi who practice on their own, when they come to that state, they really pack the bag. They stop meditation, pack the bag and go home. And then began to live a normal life. <clears throat> so you have the advantage. Advantage is the teacher is there. The teachers know what is happening. That's why in a retreat, as always, a formal retreat. If you want to do a self-retreat, there's no teacher guiding you or doing. Okay, you are on your own. But if you consider, I'm going to retreat here or there with the teacher for three months or six months, they are available, if necessary, 24-7. And if you are an experienced yogi, you might be doing only once in a week. But when these kind of reports come and the teacher will tell you to come and see him a little more often. And you can pass through. So let's go back to, we are, where are we? Number eight. Okay. You feel totally miserable about the whole situation. That itself is a insight. In other words, you are progressing in the right direction. Let's call it this way. You feel fearful, you are progressing in the right direction. You feel disgust and repulsive, it's going in the right direction. You feel miserable, it's in the right direction. And then with the aid of the teacher and with your own determination, you keep on practicing and at one point you begin to feel another emotional feeling. This is so much I want to escape. I want to escape from this. Let's put it like uh, bluntly as I want to escape from this fears and misery and this and that and all these things. Or if you want to put it a little bit of a structured line. I want to escape from this bondage of mind and matter. This mind and matter, now you know you can't escape from it. It is with you all the time. You can't control it. They are doing what they want to do. At the same time, you cannot run away from it. You cannot escape from it because it is round and round. In other words, you are bonded. You are being bonded. You are the slave of the mind and matter, so to speak. You're being bonded. And at that moment, you really want to get rid of it. In other words, you want to escape from the bondage of this mind and matter, from the prison of this mind and matter. That kind of feeling arises. It's so miserable. I just want to escape from this whole thing. And that itself is a insight, insight number nine. Okay. Knowledge of deliverance, knowledge of wanting a deliverance from the bondage of mind and matter. You want to escape. You want to deliver yourself out of this bondage of mind and matter. I think I don't think I don't pronounce it quite correctly, but it is the insight into deliverance. You want to deliver out of the bondage of this mind and matter. That feeling arises. That feeling becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. But at the same time, the other feelings are still there. But now you have more feelings to contend with. One is a scary, fearful. Another one is disgust, repulsive. Another one is miserable, depressed. And now you want to be free. You want to escape from this. So that now the four kind of feelings are in with you. But one thing was, when you come to this number four, when you began to feel it, number four, slowly and slowly, 
Now, let's say there's a whole circle. If you occupy the whole circle, that's your full. But if you divided that full whole circle into four quadrants, then the impact of the other threes are less because of the last one. So the same thing, the impact become less and less and your desire or your wish to escape from this bondage of mind and matter. In other words, escape from the so-called self. This becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. That is the ninth insight. Ninth insight, but it is not about the characteristics of mind and matter. From my point of view, these four things are the emotional impact you acquired due to the full understanding of the true nature of mind and matter, which is anicca, dukkha, and anatta. Especially anatta comes into place very, very clearly in here, because before there's atta, me, I, it, me, I, it, that is so strong. And in this experience, it is right under your nose. Everything is dissolving, and you become even scared that the one that you hold on, self, I, is going to be sucked out. And throughout these four stages, you begin to see how vulnerable you are, how helpless you are, that you can do nothing about it. And that is anatta. That is anatta. Because everything dissolving, and you have no power over it, no control over it, and you are experiencing the concept of anatta directly, directly, and it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. It becomes so strong on the night level, you want to escape from this bondage of self, or the bondage of nama and rupa, mind and matter. So, that is the ninth insight. So, with that, we will stop today. So, let's call it, I don't know how far I would be able to explain. That's why I don't put the heading of the Dharma talk. So, heading of the Dharma talk, we can call it insight into the fear, discuss, misery, and deliverance due to the nature, the true nature of mind and matter. That will be the topic. So may all of you be able to practice Satipatthana Vipassana meditation and may you be able to go through all these stages of mind and matter and wanting to have the desire to be free from the bondage of self as soon as possible. Sadhu, 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 buddham bujemi. Dhammam bujemi. Sangam Pujemi. <laughs> <laughs>